In order to realize revenue in a period different to the date that a transaction was posted in, we can make use of deferrals, which will defer revenues over a schedule that we specify. In order to do this, we set up a deferral template, which is linked and assigned that instructs Business Central on what to do with the revenue. When we post a sales document, for example, we defer the revenue to the accounting periods that are now involved based on the deferral schedule we've set up using the templates conditions and the posting date of the document itself. In order to set up a deferral template, we'll need, first of all, to go to the deferral templates page. From here, we can select new to create a new entry and fill, the fi fill in the fields we need or select an existing one. Uh, we'll need to create a new one, as we can see here. And on this page, there are a few relevant fields to cover. We begin filling in, like normal, a code and description to identify the template. We'll set up a code for 12 months. Let me just elaborate. 12 months deferral in the description. We also need to specify our deferral count. On the next tab, we have the deferral percentage where we specify how much of a payment this deferral template will defer. We'll leave this at 100% for now. There's also a field here called calculation method. We use this to specify how the amount field will be calculated for each period in the deferral schedule. Our options available here are straight line, where the deferral amounts are calculated based on the number of periods we're making use of according to the length of each period. We have equal per period. Here, the deferral amounts are calculated based on the number of periods, and the total amount is then distributed evenly across all of these periods. We have days per period, where we calculate the deferral amounts based on how many days are in the period, and finally, user defined, where we specify exactly how much the amount is per period manually. There is no automatic calculation that takes place with the user defined option. We'll stick with straight line for now. We also have our starting date, which we'll leave on posting date. However, we can adjust this to be the beginning of period, end of period, or the beginning of next period. For our number of periods, we'll specify 12 as we're looking at it's important that you're aware what your accounting periods for for your company are in this demo company the accounting periods match a 12 month standard calendar but it's important that you're aware of whether your company uses a non-standard accounting period style in the period description we can specify what description we hope to use for each deferral posting we can enter some standard text and then add a parameter all the way other all the other way around. Uh, that's not too much of a problem. The parameters we can use here are percent one, percent two, and percent three for oh, pardon me, um, for percent three for the day number, week number, and month number of the period's posting date, respectively. We can also make use of percent four, five, and six for the month name, accounting period name, and fiscal year of the period's posting date, respectively. An example of this is if we have a posting date of the 10th of May of 2020, and we enter something like revenue third for percent four, percent six. The result we would get when posting would be result uh, revenue deferred for May 2020. So with this set, as we see fit, I'll just set this back to percent four and percent six. With this set as it is, we're good to go in using this deferral template with transactions, and we'll look at that next.